Welcome. In this video, I'm going to be taking a look at this Bervito 15.6 inch Wi-Fi digital picture frame. So this was provided to me by the distributor, but they're not compensating me for this video and they're not reviewing it before I post it. If you find this video helpful and you want to purchase one of these, I'll put a link to it in the description on Amazon. And if you use that link, it helps me out a little bit and doesn't cost anything extra. We'll take a look at the back. It says photo to frame sharing, share your precious moments with your digital frame wirelessly and instantly from anywhere. 15.6 FHD display. So this is a 1080p display. Our ultra clear and vivid display delivers delivers bright, sharp, and colorful images, 16 gigabyte room for memories, 16 gigabyte storage, plenty of room to store your moments and memories, invite your friends to share, invite friends and family to share their moments to your frame, photos and video sharing, conveniently upload your photos and videos to your digital frame and share effortlessly, easy operation, intuitive touchscreen and remote control makes it super easy to use. So this seems like it could be a great product to give to a grandparent who isn't tech savvy. You could set this up their place and send them pictures of your grandkids right to their frame. Okay, so there's the frame, and this box did have a foam type material in it to protect that screen, so it wasn't just rubbing up against the cardboard. So it says getting started here. Number one, plug in and connect to Wi-Fi. Two, find your frame ID in the settings device info. Download our photo on your smartphone, iOS search in App Store, Android search in Google Play. Sign up and log into your account in our photo app. Find your phone with the frame in the devices, my devices, plus add your frame ID and a custom special email address for your frame. Accept user requests in the settings user management. Start to share your photos with the frame. More info, our user manual is waiting for you. Okay, so I'll pull this out of here. So I'll get everything out of the package and then we'll take a closer look. So here's a thank you. It has some Q&A here. Here's a remote control. This is a mini USB cable. Here's a power adapter. So this outputs five volts at two amps. This says mini USB to type C. Okay, so this is a mini USB to type C adapter. So if you have a USB type C cable, you can use it with this frame. That's really handy for newer computers. This is a stand and here's the user manual. Then below that, Let's see. Okay, this is mounting hardware. There is quite a bit in here. Looks like we have a Visa mount. I think this goes in the back of the frame and we have some screws and some wall anchors. Okay, so I'll get all this out and then we'll take a closer look. So here's the frame from the side view. Here's the back. It looks like we have two speakers back here. We have four mounting points. Looks like we have a place here to put that stand on. Here are the inputs. We have an SD card slot. Looks like some sort of a headphone port, USB, mini USB, and DC in. And we have a power button back here also. Okay, so I'm going to pull the protective film off now. Or not, let me try it from a different corner. Okay, so I plugged the power cable in and I'll plug that into this frame. Okay, turn off my light here. Okay, the frame turned on. Getting some glare there. Let's see if I can adjust this. Okay, so up here in the left-hand corner, it has some Wi-Fi networks. It looks like these are 2.4 gigahertz. So I'll tap on the one I want to join. I'll enter in my password. Okay, that's connected up. I'm going to try this with the light off, see if that's more helpful. In the bottom right-hand corner, I'll hit the little arrow to go to the next screen. So my language is English. I'll enter my city here. Then I'll enter my time zone. I'll hit next. Okay, so it says guide, let's guide you, share the app. The first step on your new frame is to find your frame ID. So it wants me to download the R Photo app. So I'm going to open that up on my iPad. I'll go into my app store and I'll search for it. I found the app, I'll say get. Okay, that's downloaded, I'll hit open. It says it would like to send me notifications. I'll allow it. And once a username and password, I'll hit sign up. I'll enter in my username and password. Okay, I'll hit submit. It says success. So I'll hit next here. It says share by email. So when you set this up, it will give you an email address and then people can send the photos to you via email. I'll hit next here. So it says, please download and install the app. Okay, so I have the app open. I'll go to devices. I'll hit add. I'll give it a name. I'll create an email. and I'll enter in my frame ID. I'll hit bind. It says binding. It says binding success. And it says I'm bound to this device. So I'll hit next here. So under devices, it says frame. It says waiting for confirmation. I'll tap on that and I'll say accept. It says success. So I'll go to photo. It says our photo would like to access the camera. I'll say, okay. Let's see if I can take a picture of the frame. I'll say, use photo. It says, processing. It says, our photo would like to access your photos. I'll say, select photos. 
done. I don't have any right now. It says click on a photo, add a caption. So I'll tap the photo. I'll type in frame for my caption. I'll tap frame below. I'll hit next or well, it's a little paper airplane. It's like send. It says connect to your local network. I'll say OK. And it says one photo. OK, so if we tap on it here, we can see that photo and there it is. So if I tap in the upper left, I can hit back. I can hit home and we're back at the home screen. So as you can see on the app, we have photo, video, devices, messages. Let's see messages. It says send photo to frame. Looks like that's kind of like a log and then media below says photo or video. So I think I can use that to send a photo I already have. Yep. So I'll close out the app here. Then we'll take a look at the functions on the frame. So if I hit in the upper left, we have a menu. I can go home. Looks like we have power. If I tap power, it's saying restart or power off. So I don't want to do either of those right now. We're on the home page. Looks like we have some photos here. We have alarm. If I tap on that, looks like we have an alarm clock. So we can set that here. I'll go back. We have video. Looks like we have weather over here on the right. So it looks like this has a forecast. And we have a calendar here. Okay. And then let's go into settings. So right off the bat, this device info has our frame ID. Next, we have user management. So this has users that are connected up to it. So if you were to get this for your parents, you could give all your siblings an account on this, and they could all upload pictures of their grandkids to send to the grandparents on this frame. Let's go to PC control. So this has a wireless LAN, and it says start service to enable FTP server. So we can hit start, and it looks like this sets up an FTP client. So that looks handy. So if you want to upload a lot of pictures, that would be a fast way to do it. Next, we have Wi-Fi. This has our Wi-Fi access point. Next, we have album settings. It says full screen. Slideshow is one minute, two minute, five minute, 10 or 30 minutes. Slideshow mode, sequential or random. Slideshow interval, five seconds, 10, 15, 30 or one minute. Slideshow transition effect. Tap on that. We have zoom center, zoom stack, depth, zoom, random. Delete photos, so we can delete photos here or restore default settings. We have system settings. For sound, we have media volume. For display, we have brightness, suspended ball, quick key navigation, auto rotate screen, date and time, automatic date and time. So it uses network date and time. And here we can set the time, set the time zone, set the hour format. This says use 24 hour time. I want to use regular time and choose the date format. Then we have language, auto on off. So you can turn this auto on and off different times of the day. So we could have it go on in the morning and turn off at night. And then we have factory data reset. Okay, so I'm going to load some photos on here and test this out a little bit, and then I'll come back and sum it up and give my thoughts. Okay, so I've been playing around with this a bit, and I want to go over a couple different things. I'm gonna pull the frame out of view here. I'll pull over my power meter. So this is a kilowatt power meter, and this tells how much power this is using. So it's currently drawing about between seven and nine watts. So if I click through here, this can extrapolate the amount this is going to cost per year to run. So this is currently programmed at nine cents per kilowatt hour. So this is extrapolating that it will cost $6.30 per year. This is if you run it 24 hours a day. If you set a schedule on here and run it less, this number is going to go down. So I'd say that's very reasonable to run this, especially if you have it on a schedule. So I wanted to point out this does come with a manual and it's a thick manual and this is all English here. So sometimes you have a thick manual that has like 12 languages in it. So there's a lot of stuff in this manual. I've found it to be very helpful. There's lots of information in it on how to do things. So I like that. Let's take a quick look in the back at the specs here. So this talks about the voltage. It talks about image format is JPEG, BMP, GIF, TIFF, and PNG. This doesn't support the HEIC, which is what you'll find on new iPhones, but you can easily convert that. And the Apple will also convert it. It does support full HD movies. The video format is MPEG-1, MPEG-2, MPEG-4, XVID, AVI, Motion JPEG, MJPEG, H.263, and then H.264, BP, MP, HB, BP8, WMB9, and VC1. It doesn't seem to support H.265. So I don't think that's a huge issue, just something to keep in mind. And we have SD card here, it's up to 32 gig. USB interface is up to 64 gig. And here's the screen size, resolution, has 16 gig of RAM. This says 16 gig of RAM, I think that's actually backwards. I think it's one gig of RAM and 16 gig of flash memory. So you can fit a lot of photos on 16 gig of flash memory. And it does have a headphone plug. I saw that in the back, I wasn't 100% sure it was headphone. 
and has remote control. As I was guessing earlier, it does only support Wi-Fi on 2.4 gigahertz. That being said, it's not going to be streaming a lot of stuff. You can use that when you're loading files onto it, but just when it's sitting here, it's not gonna be using a lot of your Wi-Fi. And it has a touch screen, remote control, and it can stand on the desktop. And then it has troubleshooting guide. So I currently have the stand connected here, and this has some little registration pins that I lined up and then this screws in, so that was very easy. But the other option is to use this screw mount here. This is a Visa mount and there is a plate here. So let's get this aligned right. So you would attach this to the back of the frame using these screws and you would attach this to the wall and then this slides in here so you can hang it on the wall. Then you can take it off if you need to do something with it. But I do like this mount, it's a pretty low profile mount. And of course we had the bag of screws and anchors. So this did have a remote. I found this to be very responsive and easy to use. We can hit menu, that comes up instantly. We can hit the direction pad here to move around. If we hit source, that will let us choose where we want to bring the photos up with. We can hit play back, volume, there's lots of options here. So if I tap on the interface here, We'll go to the home screen, and when you boot this up, it will go to the home screen. And I had actually just been playing it in slideshow mode, so I left it like this for a while. I don't know the exact amount of time, but it will eventually go into the slideshow mode. So it won't stay like this if you turn it on like this. And that was something that was pretty important to me. I don't have a big need for this mode right here. I want it to turn on and go into the slideshow mode. But if it takes a few minutes to do that, that's not a big problem to me. Also in the settings here, if we go to system settings, if we go to display settings, they have the auto rotate screen. So this screen does have, I assume it's like an accelerometer. So let me actually pull up my slideshow here. If we turn this, it's going to change the orientation. So you can mount this, say on a wall in the portrait mode. So let me also show here, I have an SD card plugged in here. Okay, so it says the storage was taken out. Let's go to the home screen. If I go to the photos here, it's going to have the different sources. So I can go to internal storage and it's not going to show anything here. It's only going to show the one image that I transferred there. If SD card, nothing's showing up. I'll put the card in. It says the card was inserted. And here we have our pictures. Now, if you have things on internal storage and other sources, you can just say all and that will do all of the photos. So to start the slideshow, I can just tap on one and that will bring it up. So you can see there's a the little floating button here and that's how you access the menu up here. You can also go in the settings and turn that off and make it so you can only use the remote to change this. So if you wanted to use this in sort of a kiosk mode where it's just showing information like displaying something and you don't want people to touch into the interface, you could do that and then you could have the remote say behind the counter of your business or whatever. This will also do video. I do have a video on the SD card so I can hit video here. It doesn't seem to mix the video and the pictures, so they are separate. I have a train here, open that up. May need to double tap that I think, there we go. So this is a video of a train, pull forward. Looks like it's cycling through the videos now. So let me back out of this. So to my eyes, that video looked very good. It didn't seem to skip frames or anything. I mean, it looked as good as it would look on a laptop. And that was a 1080p video. It seemed to have all the detail and everything. Hopefully that comes through on the video I'm capturing with my camera right now. So that's the Burbito 15.6 inch Wi-Fi digital picture frame. When I first got my first digital picture frame many years ago, probably over 10 years ago, the one feature I thought would be really cool is if it was Wi-Fi connected so I could wirelessly add pictures to it. Having to put pictures on a card and then plug it into the back of a digital picture frame can be kind of tedious. Yes. To be able to do it directly from your phone or your computer, you can more easily update the photos on your frame. Oh, another thing I want to point out here, you can see it's cropped the sides. There's a, if I tap on here, I can hit the little expand here. 
and that will make it full screen. So you can determine if you want it cropped or full screen like that. But I think this is a great way to display your pictures. So you can use this in your own home, or you could give this to, say, some grandparents, and then people could wirelessly send pictures to this over the internet, and then they can have an automatically updating frame in their house of their grandkids. So it's very versatile in that way. So that's all I'm going to cover in this video. If you have any questions, please leave them in the comments. If you like this video, please click like. If you haven't subscribed to my channel, I'd appreciate it if you could do that. And thanks for watching. Until next time, goodbye.